Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. So I haven't been doing videos for a while because I've been quite busy. I'm actually uh, living in Japan right now working on a, a documentary so that I can uh, document the, the rising vegan movement in Japan and share the kind of vegan story that, that's been going on in England uh, and all that information with people in Japan who might not necessarily have access to some of the documentaries and YouTube videos and websites that are really useful so so I'm working on doing that right now and that's taking a lot of time uh, there are going to be more updates as it comes with with that project but but yeah for now uh, I want to start doing videos that are simpler so that I have more time to work on my documentary so I'm going to do some sit down videos with the camera and uh, hopefully I can talk about some interesting topics and provide some inspiration uh, I haven't really been watching much YouTube recently but I've noticed recently that there's a lot of people who are deciding to reject the vegan community and go against veganism and talk about how veganism's caused them health problems and how vegans are extreme and different things like that. I obviously don't like to get involved in too much of the drama because I think it's better to, you know, to inspire and inform and make that the focus of our activism and, uh, and our vegan lives in general. But uh, I wanted to provide some, some inspiration on my own, so... Uh, yeah, I think I'll start by just explaining my vegan story, because I've never actually told it. Uh, so I've been vegan for about seven years now, and uh, before that, uh, which is about 12 years ago, I was vegetarian. So I decided to be vegetarian because uh, my sister became vegetarian because of one of her friends at school. And from her, she gave me this idea that meat was an animal, that it was a a once living being that had been killed and, you know, processed into a product. And, and through that kind of education that I got from her, I realized that meat was a bit strange and it wasn't something that I was very comfortable uh, contributing to and eating. So I decided very slowly to stop eating as much meat as possible uh, more or less to the point where only in certain social situations I'd eat maybe a burger in McDonald's if I was with friends, and this was at the age of 10, until I eventually stopped consuming all animal products because it became too disgusting and gross for me to continue doing. So I, uh, I became vegetarian around the age of 11, and from that point I... Uh, I had no access to the internet, I had no access to anyone else who, who was vegan or vegetarian. So I continued being vegetarian but without actually reflecting on what happens to animals or the greater impact that, that you know, eating meat and animal products has on the environment. And it wasn't until I was about 15 that I had an opportunity to learn about veganism through, through my school uh, food, food technology class. So during our cooking classes uh, the teacher I had, who was actually Indian and who had a lot of experience with vegetarian food, she knew that I was vegetarian and, and thought it would have been a good idea if I focused on veganism for some of my school projects. And then while I was researching about veganism for this, this coursework project, I had an opportunity to try things like vegan cheeses and plant-based milks, as well as things like... Um, uh, hummus and and discovering you know the power of uh, plant-based nutrition and how that can reverse diseases and and how we can get enough nutrients like protein and iron and calcium through through non-animal sources so I started to learn about what happens to to the animals in the industry and obviously the the, the kind of environmental impacts the impacts on humans and the world and uh, just through reading and researching this was enough for me to almost completely eliminate animal products but I still had an addiction to cheese and I had an addiction to a lot of things and I, I wasn't able to let go of that identity as a vegetarian and become become a vegan until uh, when I just began using social media when I was about 15 almost 16 and I um, I came across Gary Rofsky's speech, the speech where he explains to people why you should become vegan. It's not cute and it's not funny because animals are being abused. It is not your right 
It is not your freedom to do this to them. You don't get to have freedom when somebody else does it. That's a violation. And this happens because you want to buy those products. And at the end of the speech, she says, you have a choice. You can choose to continue being ignorant. Or you can change. You can do the right thing. You can stand up against the injustice of what happens to animals. And from watching that speech and hearing him explain it and realizing that there was no valid reason for me to continue eating animal products and continue causing that suffering, I decided to become vegan overnight. And then from that point, I entered a stage in my life where I tried to do as much activism as possible through the people around me, uh, to my family, to my friends at school at the time, and on social media. And I had various successes until I eventually found my voice through YouTube and through video making and filmmaking. And then I've been making YouTube videos ever since, explaining veganism to people, traveling around and and doing talks and different kind of things and um, and making my life's mission to share this message because I think it's one of the most powerful things that we can implement into our life as a philosophy and a mindset that can guide our actions towards creating the most peaceful, kind and, and beautiful planet that we could uh, exist on. So when I decided to become vegan, there are a lot of mistakes I made. Initially, I didn't eat enough variety of food. I didn't eat enough calories, and I felt quite hungry and quite uh, weak and slow. And uh, because I was driven by by animal ethics, I didn't really worry too much about thinking I needed to eat meat. It was more a case of just thinking, oh, I need to change something and learn new things and, and figure out some kind of new system. But then I kept learning through watching YouTube videos, reading things and discovering more plant-based foods. And eventually I got used to eating more and more food. I ended up finding things like smoothies and and uh, porridge or oatmeal and uh, and then finding all the kind of variety of kind of meals that I could veganize that I was already used to. And also finding vegan alternatives to things like burgers and pizzas and sausages. And, um, and then eventually after a, a short period of, of learning about that, making a lot of mistakes by accidentally eating things that, that weren't vegan, by buying things by accident that had animal ingredients and, uh, and arguing with people trying to explain veganism and not having any success. But eventually I found a balance where I'd educated myself enough to, to be able to read ingredients, to, to face the social situations that were tough, and to properly plan my diet so that I could eat enough and feel good for the amount of exercise and the amount of things I had in my life as well as balancing my, my, my nutrition so that I uh, I wouldn't become deficient in certain nutrients that that in life you can become lower in if you, if you don't have a mindfulness towards nutrition. And I think um, things like B12, it takes vegans a lot of time to understand that uh, supplementing B12 can be a really useful part of your life and uh, and also um, consuming like a wide variety of beans and nuts and seeds and and not concentrating your diet onto just one thing like only fruits or only raw food or uh, or doing any kind of more restrictive eating. I tried to stay away from that as much as possible but but obviously there were times when I tried eating more of different kinds of foods to see what worked. And and one of the key things about the way I've been vegan is that I've always kept a pragmatic approach of trying to understand if there's ever been a time when I've not felt great or if I've had any health issues or if I've not felt completely healthy or if I've uh, felt like something wasn't right, just to constantly keep questioning things and learning and finding the most ethical, sustainable way of of developing. Because the thing that I've learned most from being vegan for seven years is that veganism isn't so much a state of being a vegan. It's more a process and a mindset and an attitude we have towards the world and the way we live. And if we can have the kind of mindset that looks at the world and says, the way we're acting, maybe there's a better way. And maybe we don't know that yet. 
but let's keep being open-minded and learning and listening and questioning and going through our journey with with the open-mindedness to absorb the new information and take action upon it because you can become vegan and and not quite realize the the impacts that that our, our buying choices have on the world whether it's animal products or not whether it's to humans or just the environment or obviously the animals and when you can have a mindset where you see all these things and you you let go of your ego and you step back and realize that that these choices have such a profound impact on the world around us and if we don't have a mindfulness towards that it can be very easy to get sucked up in in the consumer traps and the advertising and and vegans can be a victim of the advertising just as people who weren't vegan are in different ways so through this journey I've tried to be as mindful and open-minded as possible whilst my, maintaining my principles and I think if we can have that kind of open-mindedness and, and have strong principles that are based on love and compassion and not getting too defensive and too stuck in our ego, then I think we can then create this beautiful vegan world where, where we can treat the other animals and the other humans and the planet around us with respect and love and then find a balance in the world that's more free and happy than in the state of things right now. So for anyone who's who's questioning veganism and the importance of it and thinking maybe it's not the way to go, I just want to let everyone know that veganism is beautiful. With veganism we have this opportunity to share with the world, with ourselves, with the animals, with the planet, kindness in every way. We can have a mindfulness and a sense of compassion and connectedness with everything around us. We can love ourselves and we can love the world around us. And we can inspire people through that action. And through being that every day, we have the choice to promote compassion and kindness and be the change that we want to see. So I'm going to be making lots more videos. I want to talk more about some of the things I've learned from veganism and some of the insights I have but since I'm working on this documentary I'm going to try and make simpler videos but I'm still going to try and make them as regular as possible if you want to check out my podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes uh, I upload podcasts quite regularly so there's always something to listen to and if you want to support the things I do I have a Patreon account and also on my website you can buy my uh, vegan activist stickers and also uh, the ebook and audio book that I've created. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope um, you have a beautiful day and that you can inspire people to realize that veganism is this powerful movement that that can't be stopped by by people who have given up as a result of their ignorance. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. See you later. I'm kind of curious though. What's the excuse now? You got a choice today. When you leave this room, you can choose to be radically kind. Never to intentionally harm another animal for breakfast, lunch, or dinner ever again. And these creatures have never harmed you, violated you, or taken advantage of you in any way, shape, or form. The least you can do is return the favor. Or you can stay radically cruel. Keep the status quo as is. Make sure animals have no freedom. Make sure they never experience one drop of human kindness. Make sure their babies are stolen from them. Make sure their beaks are sliced off, their horns are cut off, and their testicles ripped out. Make sure there's a knife in their throat every second of every day for eternity really hope you make the right choice.